Oftentimes, punk rock is seen as a more melody-driven genre, with subgenres like pop punk, skate punk, and ska punk having made such a significant mark, but the underground world of hardcore has given us a number of subgenres comparable to some of the most extreme branches of metal music, many of which might actually sound more like metal than punk to someone who's not well-versed in the punk musical tree. How's it going, folks? My name is Jack Miller, I am the incredibly underqualified punk historian, and after the results of a recent poll I sent out on this channel, we are going to be diving into the most extreme sound in all of punk music, power violence. In this video, I plan on laying out the history of power violence from its origins in the mid to late 80s crossover scene to its place in modern hardcore today, along with various shoutouts to some of the more impactful and significant bands, as well as my personal thoughts on the subgenre. Before we dive in, I want to let you all know that I made a power violence Spotify playlist to go along with this video, and you can find a link in the description below. Much like with Crust Punk though, a lot of this stuff just isn't on streaming, so there's a number of rad bands that I did have to leave out. And finally, if you are interested in seeing videos about punk rock, may I humbly ask that you please subscribe to my channel here. I'm having a lot of fun making these, and I want to make sure that all of you can keep having fun watching them. Anyways! Like I mentioned in the introduction, the story of power violence has its origins in the mid-80s punk scene, following in the footsteps of the major players of the crossover thrash scene like Suicidal Tendencies, DRI, Void, and Cryptic Slaughter. Although the genre would also draw a lot of inspiration from some of the grindier hardcore bands of the same era like Discharge, Negative FX, and SSD, the metal influence of crossover was really what gave it the extra punch to take the next step forward into a more extreme sound. The sound that would later come to be known as Power Violence made its first debut in the form of a 12 minute and 41 second demo tape self-released by the Weymouth, Massachusetts based band Siege. The young band would have a very short run from only 1981 to 1985, but their impact would be felt significantly throughout the world of hardcore punk, as not only the founding fathers of Power Violence, but in the budding scenes of crust punk and grindcore as well and grindcore godfathers Napalm Death have even cited them as a major influence on their sound. Despite being a tiny blip on the already super underground radar of 80s hardcore punk, Siege's incredibly abrasive rough demo tape made them hardcore pioneers almost overnight, and the late 80s would spawn what I think a lot of us would consider to be the first wave of power violence. Over the course of the next few years, power violence would find its way into all sorts of different places, but would make its most significant mark on the hardcore scene in California, and the LA and Bay Area scenes would spawn a number of bands that would truly solidify power violence as a proper subsect of extreme hardcore. I'd say this stuff started to take shape around 1987, and a lot of it was put out by a San Francisco-based label called Slapaham Records. A few noteworthy bands from Slapaham's roster include Infest, Crossed Out, No Comment, Neanderthal, Man is the Bastard, Spaz, and The Capitalist Casualties. The label was also home to a number of power violence bands based outside of California, including Hell Nation, Enemy Soil, and the Japanese duo The Slight Slappers. I also want to mention the smaller label 625 Thrash Core, which was started a few years after the initial boom in the late 80s that also spawned a handful of noteworthy bands like Charles Bronson, What Happens Next, and Iron Lung. The label's founder, Max Ward, was also a key player on the musical side of things as well, having played drums in several power violence bands from this era, including Spaz and Capitalist Casualties. I also, of course, have to talk about the LA-based Pessimizer Records that was founded by Chris Edler from the band Despise You that issued a series of compilations titled Cry Now, Cry Later that primarily featured power violence, and I'd say Pessimizer really put LA on the map as one of the definitive scenes of the genre's origins. Due to its extreme sound and close scene proximity, 90s power violence also crossed over into the realm of crust punk quite frequently, and a lot of crust punk bands like Drop Dead, Dystopia, and Los Crudos would often be seen playing shows with power violence bands, and also had a lot of material that crossed over into the genre as well. I've done a whole video on crust punk, so if you're a fan of that stuff and you haven't seen it yet, definitely check that one out when you get the chance. And finally, to round off the 90s power violence scene, I also want to mention the quote-unquote emo violence cohort, which included bands like Orchid, Inhumanity, and Page 99. As far as emo violence goes, the name is pretty self-explanatory if you're a music nerd like me, but it's essentially an offshoot of power violence that crosses over into the realm of emotional hardcore. This stuff is far too niche to get an entire video of its own, but I'll probably talk about it a little more when I eventually cover emotional hardcore and scarms. That said, it definitely is important to include this stuff here, as it really is more of a product of power violence than it is anything else. Going back to something I mentioned earlier though, I'm sure many of you familiar with extreme punk have at least heard the term thrashcore somewhere before, and it essentially refers to punk bands in the early days that were playing just a little faster and more extreme than the rest. In other words, what people call thrashcore was more or less what all the crossover thrash bands were doing before they started playing chug riffs and halftime breakdowns in between fast parts. The genre is more or less extinct these days as all of its key players like Void, DRI, and Cryptic Slaughter either disbanded or started doing the proper crossover thrash sound a long time 
time ago, but a few names in this camp you might not recognize include Septic Death, Deep Wound, and Heresy. I also want to mention the bands Vitamin X, Limp Wrist, and Trash Talk, and although I think most people, including myself, usually think of them as crossover thrash or simply hardcore bands, they're really the only authentic examples of thrashcore I can think of that's come out in the past two decades. So that is besides municipal ways to also dabble with a more lighthearted take on the thrashcore sound in their early days. In all honesty though, most of this stuff tends to lean one way or the other towards crossover thrash or power violence, and I generally just think of thrashcore bands as one or the other. After its rise to niche popularity status in the 90s, power violence has retained a small but very dedicated following within the world of extreme music, and the following two decades would spawn a fairly sizable list of solid power violence bands. Like it did with most underground scenes, the rise of the internet tore down the barriers of regional scenes. And although power violence had certainly begun to develop a strong following outside of the West Coast, by the mid-2000s it was just as global as Beatdown, Crust Punk, or any of the older hardcore subsets. As I'm sure you can imagine, it would be impossible to try and name every single band that came out during this era, especially since now it's the entire world we're talking about instead of a few dozen bands based around a handful of labels, but some of the bands I would say are worth checking out include Mind Eraser, Coke Bust, ACXDC, Soul Swallower, Sex Prisoner, Hatred Surge, and Weekend Nachos. I also want to mention the Maryland based band Full of Hell who are worth checking out too if you haven't already. I know a lot of people would probably consider them more of a grindcore band, but I still think they're worth noting here as they've definitely had a presence in the world of what you might call new school power violence. And finally, this video would not be complete if I didn't mention the Oxnard, California-based Nails, who've earned themselves the slot as the most successful power violence band to ever exist, coming in at a whopping 132,000 monthly listeners on Spotify, which isn't that many in comparison to mainstream artists, but these are huge numbers by hardcore standards, and when you factor in that they're part of the most extreme sect, they easily blow everybody else out of the water. Despite having an intergenerational cult fanbase, Power Violence has more or less remained audibly identical to the noise its founding fathers made in the late 80s, and I wanted to offer some of my thoughts as to why I think that might be. If you ask any metalhead, they'll tell you that grindcore is a musical subgenre so extreme that there's almost no melodic element to it whatsoever. With grindcore being merely a few steps away from power violence, it's only natural that most punks would describe the genre the same way. Don't get me wrong, I certainly would consider myself a fan of this stuff. But we do have to be real here and acknowledge that at its core, power violence is a genre almost entirely made up of noisy, violent screaming and blast beats played on what sounds more like a lid of a trash can being beat with a wrench than any actual snare drum. What I mean by this is that power violence is a sound so extreme that there's only so much that can be done with it before it turns into a closely related but still noticeably different musical genre. Draw out the songs with fast punk beats and or halftime breakdowns and it turns into something closer to crust punk or beatdown or add more riff-based guitar parts and structure and it'll drift a lot closer towards the death metal direction. Because it fits into such a tight spot on the extreme music spectrum, power violence will probably always sound the way it has for the past 30 some odd years for as long as it exists. Be that as it may though, I think the genre certainly serves its purpose in hardcore punk and I don't think its consistency throughout the years is all that bad of a thing. As for my personal thoughts on power violence, I like to listen to it from time to time but I usually don't spend too much time on it. For example, I might have one day where I listen to a whole bunch of different power violence records and then leave the genre alone for a while. Or I might throw it into a mix with other hardcore breeds like Crust, Crossover, or Beatdown and listen to it alongside the other genres. Regardless if you're a casual or diehard listener though, power violence is something I'd say anyone who considers themselves a fan of hardcore punk should at least try. It's without question an acquired taste and definitely not for everybody, but at least in my experience once it clicks I feel like there's a certain energy you get from it that nothing else in punk music really emulates. Anyways, I think that about sums up our crash course on power violence here. I actually had a lot of fun writing and researching this one, as power violence isn't a genre I visit nearly often as I once did a few years ago, and I definitely enjoyed listening to a lot of these bands again. Before I sign off, I do also want to mention that my brand new band Zest will be hitting Bridge City Sessions in Portland at the end of the month here, and I'll be sharing our videos to a playlist on this channel once that happens. My other band Sellout Club met an unfortunate end this past December, but you know, things must go on, and I'm super excited about Zest, so if you're into skate punk, definitely check out our Bridge City when it comes out, and I also plan on uploading other band-related content to the channel, so stay tuned for that as well. But I think that's enough for me. I want to hear what you guys have to say. What are some of your favorite power violence bands? What about Thrashcore? Do you have any favorite bands in that camp? Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time.